Hey, so we have something a little bit different this week. It is club random after all. Everybody needs a break from work, and I am taking a small one now, but we plan for it. We have something for you that hasn't been seen yet that I think is pretty cool. Early on when we were taping, I was talking to Judd Apatow here at the bar, and Quentin Tarantino was waiting in the room back there, and he decided to come over and have a seat and talk for a while. So here it is, two iconic directors with me, talking movies and more. Enjoy. Hey, guys. Oh. Oh, oh, he's here. Hey. Hello, oh, he's here. I didn't know you were <laughs> here. Like the Gary Schelling Show. Hey, everybody, it's Norm Crosby. What happened? Oh, my gosh. Ella Fitzgerald is outside <laughs> yeah. here on Playboy After Dark. <laughs> this is Candy. Great. I'd like you to meet Roman Polanski. All right, here is him. Bill Cosby. How you doing? Mother Judge of Speed. Loved it. <laughs> All right. Well, as long as we treat every woman at the Playboy Mansion here tonight with respect. Of course, Bill, of course we do. That's what we do here at the Playboy Mansion. Hey, wow, you're here. Yes. I'm so gratified. You know Judd? Yes. Yes, we met each other uh, 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 a few times. And, uh, and from uh, back when you were in Sandler's movie. Well, no, no, no. Well, that's when we actually got to know each other yes. because... Um, you were the preacher. Well, 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 well the, the, the deacon. The deacon. The deacon. The deacon. Will deacon. you tell him that he's a big director who could get any <laughs> table at any? Oh, place? okay. Well, uh, when you take over John Landis' spot and like nine movies are released that are comedies, like Judd Apatow presents. Right. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I'm not going to direct this, but I'll present it. I've never done that. Oh yeah, all my friends want to make movies. Okay, yeah, yeah. Jenna Patel presents. Right. I defy you to go by IMDb and find a present. You were just funny though. You were just. It's Abdul Joyce. It's Abdul Joyce. Felt that way. Juno Temple's like jerking off the spear is a funny gag. <laughs> You're going deep into year one territory. I knew you'd go, you'd find a, a nook and cranny that no one was expecting. You have a drink? Yes, actually. I would like a margarita because I noticed there was a margarita mix. Margarita? What? Well, that's cool. What do I look no, like? There's a, a margarita mix. I look like I, a barman. I, I wouldn't even ask that if there wasn't a margarita mix that I saw. I'm kidding. I'm be, I would learn how to make there's a margarita. There's a better one than that. That's oh, like the no. jump. Oh, okay. Where's the better one? I think it's, it's the one right next to the olive jar. No, no, no. Keep going. No, no. The other side. No, keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Huh. That's the gourmet. Margarita. Oh, oh. That looks like the gourmet. What uh, kind of alcohol? <laughs> I think there's a worm in here. <laughs> oh my, well, Spitfire. Okay, it's a British margarita mix, which I hadn't actually thought about. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, geez, where's the rock when you need them? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of liquor goes in with this? Uh, tequila. Tequila. No, no, with margarita, just uh, 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 lots of ice. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so tequila and what? Ice? Uh, yeah, I'll take the... Uh, uh, I don't want to plug it. All right. Uh, no, just, but, uh, I'll, I'll take the Casamigos. Reposado. Is that this? No, no, no. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, no, 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 no. You're doing good. Keep oh. going deeper, deeper, deeper. No, 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 no. The Casamigos. <laughs> okay, you're almost there. You're almost touching it. Yeah, that one. Boy, you know liquor better than I do. Oh, boy. Well, I mean, you're going to be the yeah. bartender on me I and, know. and asking me. I I'm know. You have to learn I know. I should, get, I, should get, I should get better at it. My bad. No, just margarita mix and, 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 and ice and tequila and you're set. Now, you know what? I, I make a better margarita. Yeah. Than why don't why you, you just make what? it for yourself? Since this is uh, tequila and I'm already drinking tequila. Would you mind if I tried it along with you? Yes, by all means. <laughs> I would not so mind polite. at all. That was my audition. <laughs> I, heard, I heard you were casting, and I thought maybe I'd throw yeah, in yeah, a little, that, uh, that, that just was, to show you I could do it, my friend. That was your mammoth dialogue. That was your About Last Night Part 2. Send, uh, send Quinn <laughs> He's on real time next week. Oh, he is, is he? I'm so excited. Uh, mammoth? Yeah. Oh, what a motherfucker, right? Mm. Ballsy? Oh, He's the man. Really? Yeah. Well, look, from, that's from, from, that's no. a high compliment from you. No, 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 no. Look, from, no. Do you from, think he's the man? Oh, yeah. The no, first no. time I directed, I had to re direct Rip Torn. Yeah, the yeah, first yeah, day yeah. at Larry Sanders, I never directed, never even thought about directing, but Gary asked me to do it. I read his book on directing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the one thing I took from it is he said, when you give notes to an actor, give almost nothing. He's like, if you give it the tiniest note, it will change every single thing they do. Mm -hmm. And I did that with Rip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he still ripped my head off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so saying that 
Like about you have to be saying, very like, vague about what you tell the actor because they're so like. Well, if you're not line reading them and giving them eight things, if you're just going like, I don't know, I think you'd be a little more upset that, uh, in this. You, Every choice they make in the scene there is going to be different. Chris, that was his advice. Chris, but he's a big. Wait, wait, it's about it's about being specific about what you're saying because if yeah. you're arbitrary, yeah, they're they're a fish looking for water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris Thompson once gave me a note uh, when I was doing this series called Hard no Hard Knocks. You're welcome. Yeah, I remember the... I, I, I never saw Hard Knocks, but I remember the... I remember the TV spot that you guys used to do on Showtime after Showtime. It's Gary Shandling. In 1988. Uh -huh. I used to say... You, you, doing the, you, you doing the questionnaire <laughs> with the dude. I remember that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, my, I almost didn't. I remember saying to the cast once, remember, we're not, when we were taping, we're not doing this for the 200 people here in the audience tonight. We're doing it for the 200 people watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Showtime, but you know who ran Showtime then and, and cast me? Peter Chernin. Oh, wow, yeah. Early Chernin. Who can get a table anywhere? Anyway, yeah. I'm going to make you feel bad about this table thing. But, uh... So but what were you talking about before that? You were, oh, you were heading into something else. I know. What were we talking about? What did I about say? About your acting? When he... No, we were talking about margaritas. Uh, uh, no. David you know, Mamet? Oh, yeah, yes. we were talking about David Mamet, yes. <laughs> well, let me answer your question more directly. Oh, Chris what Thompson. You were saying. Chris Thompson. Thompson. Okay, there you go. Yeah, thank you. One of us has to be the designated thinker. Yes. Uh, Chris Thompson gave me a note. I was in the... Uh, do I, some, I guess I fucked up the scene or something. And uh, he was like, look, I could give you motivation or talk about your back or anything, but um, act better. <laughs> 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 Sometimes I tell that story to my writers, like yeah. once every five years, and I'll just be like, write better. Yeah, yeah. You know, just, <laughs> just you know, it's not complicated. Do it like you did. Yeah. Not like you just did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember when you cared? So I didn't know you two guys had to know each other. What's that, the Director's Club? Are you cast? Director's Club. Well, no, no, no. Actually, well, we met each other, uh, especially through Adam Sandler, during the, the time that I did Little Nicky. I was, like, hanging out in that, yeah. that crew for a while. Mm -hmm. And so we went to a bunch of different things yeah. together. Mm -hmm. But also, I think Frings and Geeks had just went off the air, or was on its way to go off yes. the air, and I had missed it. But yeah. but that whole Happy Madison crowd was mm. like crazy for it. So I mentioned it, and this is back in video cassettes. Mm. He got me a box yeah. of like literally the entire season up, in, up until it had stopped airing, all on video cassettes. And I still have those video cassettes because oh, wow. I have a big video collection. Yeah. So I, I, uh, uh, so Jew, I had a whole box. A Jew building a business. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. <laughs> and I started watching, like, oh my God, this is Dazed and Confused as a fucking TV yeah. show. This yeah, is yeah. really fucking amazing. You know? And then, uh, uh, and like, oh, so what I would like be with Adam's people, like, oh, that's who that fucking guy <laughs> The guy who always hangs out with Leslie Mann. Okay, well, that's who he is. All right. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but I feel bad because when I did Funny People with Sandler, I wasn't aware that that was the exact time that you were trying to use him no, for no, no, Glorious no. Bastard. No, no, if he, if he wasn't, look, obviously he should have done yours because of the, the, whole, the, the, the whole thing of it. I mean, you start with the fucking yeah. video cassette of you guys yeah. as kids, all right? Because <laughs> uh, uh, Sam Levine was in that movie. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. But the thing is, yeah, the Bear Jew was going to, I wrote the Bear Jew for Adam Sandler. That's not right. And like when I was doing it, when I was doing uh, Little Nicky, I'm telling him like, oh man, I get to fucking beat up Nazis with a bat. Yeah. Fuck, this is gonna be fucking awesome. <laughs> I can't fucking wait. I can't fucking wait. <laughs> it was like telling every Jewish guy, I'm gonna fucking play this guy who beats up Nazis with a fucking bat. <laughs> so he didn't do it. Well, he literally just signed. Yeah. We were literally making our movies at the exact same time, and he just signed to do uh, Funny People. But I had to lock Adam in like a and year and a half. No, and literally, like when yeah. the movies opened, they opened up within yeah. three weeks of each other. So but I, I had to lock Adam in like a year and a half before we shot. Yeah, yeah. It was like, a, like, hey, in a year and a half, are you going to be free this summer? So yeah, yeah. we worked on that for a long time. Well, luckily, his career was not hurt by not doing your movie, <laughs> yeah. which I'm sure killed your movie in the box office. I mean, that, <laughs> you know. But Funny People is another awesome movie. Mm -hmm. Another well, no, 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 another no, no. Open. no. Here's the problem. 
He wrapped up all the good Jews. <laughs> that was the problem. Seth Rogen, all the good Jews were doing funny people. I'm killing Hitler with baseball bats and there's no good Jews available. And David Krumholtz, nobody. All the good Jews were all wrapped up. You... I'm doing the Jewish male <laughs> fantasy. And the fucking comics have got the Jews wrapped up. I'm stuck with Sam Levine. Okay. I want David Crumholtz. I get Sam Levine. But is that where I am? Isn't that all? My, all my all entire Sam career is built on Sam Levine. <laughs> we used to do a bit on Politically Incorrect called Want, Settle, Get. And we would, I mean, I bet you all the names we have now or we had in those that bit would be I don't think kids even know who they were. You know, but oh, well, you thought it's for our guests? Yeah, I, I, it was we, like you want Clint yeah. Eastwood, whoever was like the A list yeah, at yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll get uh, Roy Scheider, you know, or uh, whatever, it was, and you wind up yeah. with. And the punchline well, is, I do know, a whole yeah. like I do a whole thing about that in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where <laughs> the Marvin Schwartz character, the the agent who yeah. puts American Al, talent Al, in foreign films. Al Pacino. Yeah, Al Pacino. Yeah. <laughs> <Fed's> <laughs> that, but, but that's a particular. <laughs> gig okay yeah. you're putting american talent in italian movies and, yes. and he's like well the italians you know <laughs> <laughs> they want Warren Beatty, they get george hamilton right that's the bit <laughs> they want marlon brando yeah. they get burr <laughs> <laughs> they want steve mcqueen they get you rick dalton <laughs> or they get ty Harden. i don't know <laughs> you may be like 10 years too young yes to <laughs> quite be tickled by that movie as much as someone of our ages. I mean, I was I was very like moved by it. I thought the ending was really emotional. Why do you think it was so much like to me? It's, my, it's like lost mm -hmm. what lost? Uh, oh, it's, uh, it's optimism a, it's a or fucking, it's I, well, it's a real well it's, a, well, it's an interesting thing actually because it's like um, when you realize in the movie. When you're watching when you realize sharon isn't gonna die and, and then all of a sudden like abigail folger joins them and there's yeah. this all this like overhead god-like shot and you were like they're all safe all the people yeah. who died that night they're safe and the bad guys have been put down yeah uh it goes off and then it has its once upon a time in the title and it's like tinkly music yeah. box music right and it's like touching and it's nice it's yeah. nice but almost Fairly shortly after you acknowledge that this is a nice fairy tale, you also acknowledge yeah. it's a nice fairy tale that did not happen. Of yeah. course, but it was your movie. We knew that was going to happen. No, 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 we, I, no. I get that. I get that. You get already that. killed Hitler. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, actually, it was, no, it was actually funny. Uh, uh, what, what's her fucking head? Uh, um, <laughs> what's her fucking head? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, the, the fancy uh, uh, Hollywood journalist. I can't remember her name right now. All right, but... Uh, a critic? She, no, no, well, the, she's a famous journalist who asks, talks to Hollywood people. Uh, uh, Rona Barrett. Now I can't say it. Rona Barrett. Be a, no, no, I can't say it. Yeah, but, but that is, that is, it's that Rona line. Barrett, that line, Grandpa? Line, she line, Kelly. It's not Rona Barrett, but it might as well be Rona Barrett. All right. Hedda Harper. Okay. No, you're, he was, you're turning it, you're taking it into a further afield. All right. uh, uh, but she asked me, when that movie came out, the last one, she asked me, she goes, okay, so, well now, okay, so you're rewriting history and, and killing these bad guys. <laughs> but you've already done that in Inglorious Bastards. So is that you being uncreative and you're just going oh. back to the old thing? And I was like, no, I can do it anytime I want. You can't fucking do it. You're ripping me off if you do it. I fucking started this shit. I can do it next five movies if I want. <laughs> And they wonder why, you know, we sometimes bitch. Because what a what a just what a just a cunty <laughs> approach, you know, like <laughs> it's just cunty, you know. She was okay because she actually appreciated my answer, but it was like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just it, it, there's no perspective. It wasn't a serious. She wasn't, look, I'll, I'll defend her for a second. She wasn't being super serious. It was about, on well, what would you say to you know, people? Even though I never say, yeah. you what know would what you it, say to... You know what it reminds me of? It uh, reminds me of the what I consider like the lowest job in the world, which is the uh, sports reporters yeah. who ask questions of athletes after a game. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Those men 
are not <laughs> those girly <laughs> men who are like, you know, LeBron, uh, you know, uh, you lost by uh, two points. You think you could have done something more. And you just, you know, this yeah. five foot eight little nebbish. Yeah. Uh -huh. Asking this giant. Hoping he, of, he doesn't get a, a, a bucket of ice. Uh, like, right, if, if we were in a different oh, circumstance, oh, yeah. a, oh, shut the fuck up, you little <laughs> fuck. You know? And just, it's, it's kind of. But like, what about the fans, it, Yeah. You know, just <laughs> pl questions that are hard to answer. And could you do something different? Or, you know, how, how, how they. Every question now begins with how. How excited were you? Well, I mean, look, how I mean, much does this does look, this hurt your chance? Look, look in in celebrity, the celebrity version of that is the person on the uh, on on the red carpet doing the interviews. But that's the celebrity version of it. That's not coming after having won or lost a game. Yeah. And coming off of like, no, you've got that whole right. energy going through. Yeah. No, you've just done your right. thing. You've done what nobody else, even right. just to get through the fucking game, but nobody else in that fucking auditorium could do. That's the point. Especially the little pipsqueak asking you these questions. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, could you done better? I don't know. Could you have made the junior varsity squad? Oh, no. Not even that. <laughs> you know, like, just, just, you know, no perspective. No respect for, you know... Just, but when you watch movies, all I think the whole time is, God, this must have been so hard to do. Right. Right? And you just think of like oh, just can years I, oh, and I years gotta ask of you thought. two guys about 1917. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you said that. 1917. Yeah. First of all, now I don't I don't know if it could even be nominated for Best Picture because they have these rules about minority representation and Unfortunately for yeah, people, yeah. Of, uh, World War One. <laughs> all right. Fortunately for people of color, yeah, uh, they did not. They were not able to get into World War One, which is a yeah, shame because exactly. it was a great time <laughs> <I know. laughs> in those trenches. Yeah, at least, in, at least in World War Two, you had North Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> you at least had North right. Africa. Put the Berbers in yeah, or something. Yeah. Okay, it looks to me. First of all, I think it's it should have won every award. If, if no, yeah, that was my year. They yeah. definitely shouldn't have won oh, no. the award. No, that was your year? Yeah, that was my year. Oh, okay. Well. No, you don't have to change your opinion. I just don't agree. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't think you remember it all the way. If the thing is like achievement in like whatever they, the phrase no, is. No, motion, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my point. It, achievement in motion picture science or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen a movie that looks like that. I felt like they took, same thing with almost The Revenant. Mm -hmm. I think you're making it a little too big of it. Okay, maybe I am. Yeah. I'm not a director. But, like, 1917 looks to me like it's two shots. Okay, well, look. Okay. That's a trick? I, look, look, yeah, it is. Well, it obviously is a trick. I mean, the, the what's how going do you, on. How do you... I mean, look, not, look, look, look how I'll, do tell, you I'll tell not, you where I'm coming from, where 1917 yeah. would be truly, truly impressive, is if they did the movie with six cuts and that's it. Yeah. All right. No, no, not okay. seven-minute cuts yeah. and... So and another okay. eight minutes, and then another but, seven but, minutes, but, but and another how, six minutes, okay. and then invisible. Yeah. But Quentin, what's all my question? Cuts, though, right? How do it's I, all I'm invisible? Just the, cuts. Just the lane. Well, no, they're all they're all connecting. Okay, they're all I, connecting. But there's no, I like. <laughs> how can something have no moment where I go, oh, I see where they cut here? No, no, no. The, Look, they how, look, what's they the trick? Look, no, no. They they do a very good job of that. Look, I can how. Look, I can tell where half of the big. The big leap cuts are. I can tell if I'm paying attention. I can tell where half of the big and of course I'm watching the movie, so I'm paying How? attention. Well, because it's like oh, a big flash happens, a big bomb happens. That happens well, once, and then and then one there's there's one where I feel like the director is. Almost, I'm not saying they do it a bad job of that. No, all right? I feel like there's there's one cut, which I feel like it's the director saying to the audience, "Look what I'm doing," because he walks into a building, a bomb goes off. It, the screen goes totally black for 10 seconds. Yeah. I feel like he's saying... Well, that's him reset. I feel like he's saying to the audience, just notice, for the first hour of this movie, yeah. you didn't see a cut, and now I'm giving you 10 seconds to think about what a cut is. No. And now I'm going to do the rest of the movie, which is even more complicated, yeah. uh, without looking like another no, no, cut. No, 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 no. That's actually... No, that's actually Maybe not... This a, that, no, dumb no, 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 no. That's not a wrong uh, uh, um, dissertation on what he on what he was doing. It's... Not too dissimilar from what Hitchcock did. Well, Hitchcock committed to doing the long takes yeah. in, in, in Rope. But Hitchcock has one cut in Rope. And it's the most 
impactful moment in There's Rome. So much less happening. They're in an apartment. <laughs> yes, but they're in an apartment. This is I, all look, of I World agree, War but never One. Never the look. I come on. That's, look, that's not you can't. Look, come, if you're going to do the whole thing about long cuts, then it's got to be about long cuts. Even if it was like 15 minutes yeah. per cut, I still all right, that would be that I would be more. I still can't yeah. tell where the cut is. Can you? Bill, let me just say one of them. You can tell where the cuts are. Right? Woody from Am Toy Story is not real. It's all fake. And so he's like so excited about the cuts thing. Like if you see Birdman, how like, can you? How can something look like there's no cut and there's a cut? That's okay. You're just I'm too not gonna, impressed by that. All right. Like apparently look, I am, no, but I'm not you're, you. Look, they did a good job with go, it. Yeah. I would be more in. I'm not that impressed about these long cuts where they're doing invisible cuts. I mean, like, for instance, when I watched... Uh, uh, there's even a name for it, an invisible cut. Okay, yeah, 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 there is a name See, for I it. didn't even yeah. know that. Okay, like, for instance, okay, when I saw... Treat me like the bartender. <laughs> yeah. okay, I'm just a fucking bartender. Yeah. No. I don't know about your... I don't your, understand I the don't movie magic. your business, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you, you tell me you're some sort of a director, <laughs> I believe you. I mean, this guy, I don't know, he says he's a director. Me, hey, I can't get him, can't get, get, get it. I couldn't chance. direct the column of ants to a melting Hershey bar, but you, sir, I believe you. Now tell me your theory. <laughs> I mean, look, when I'm like watching the long fight in Atomic Blonde, I'm like, oh yeah, my that's God, a great one. this is fucking amazing. Yeah. This is fucking amazing. Okay, wait a minute. No, the, the shots, yeah. the shot took a shit. The, the, the shot's not going on this long. They took a shit. And now it's just all tainted. Yeah. It's well, all Because you spotted tainted. it, you mean? Well, because it's obviously yeah. they didn't carry it through. Yeah. I mean, look, to me, the reason to do a long take, and I'm not saying they didn't do long takes in 1917. They obviously did long takes in 1917. But to read, but like, but your ran ransom de tre, <laughs> yeah. everything that you're about is the long takes. Well, then really fucking do it. Go 15 minutes per fucking And, you, and you're saying they didn't do that. No, they didn't do that. And this, and and this put Henny Youngman at the end of it. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This uh, Santa Claus figure that you, <laughs> that you speak of, my friend. All right. So okay, I'm, you know, I'm, okay, I'm okay, going to wrap there, this there, up. There's one more thing, though. There's okay. one more thing. There's one more thing about 1917. Because I actually like the movie. But a friend of mine brought up something that, oh, my God, once he brought it up, I couldn't unhear it. He was complaining about it because he felt it played too much like a video game. Now, I don't play video games, so I didn't really necessarily I've feel that. I've never, ever yeah. seen one. No, I don't play video games, so I don't feel that per se. Yeah. So I'm actually thinking it feels more innovative than maybe uh, somebody who plays video games does. All right. But the person who plays video games is like, it's Wolfenstein the movie. <laughs> That's but I game? would like it better. Well, there's this famous like Nazi werewolf thing game yeah. called Wolfenstein. Yeah. It's like Wolfenstein the movie, but except I would like it better if it was Wolfenstein yeah. the movie. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to wrap this up with this. Um, yes, maybe I'm a stupid bartender who doesn't understand filmmaking. To me, that was very impressive. It is impressive. But I wait, let me just finish. But what movie did I like better? It's not even close, which is your movie. Because you, just, it you got, didn't need to end it with that. But way. I could. But it's the truth. <laughs> okay. I'm not. But why have, aren't you like? I have many flaws. Even my enemies don't think I'm a liar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But why aren't you so impressed with the that, way he made uh, Los Angeles well, look like LA in the seventies? Like that. No, that's uh, I mean, He had to build streets it's just that's, digitally. It's one of my. F I'm going to say this. I was going to say that to him. I'll say it here, over there. I might repeat myself. His movies up until Hollywood were all like revenge movies. That's what we loved. It's so basic. And he got to that thing. He's like Hugh Hefner with naked women. Like <laughs> it was lying right there, but he found it. <laughs> but the last movie he made, this is why I was trying to tell him when he was on the show, I said, he can't quit now. His last movie is by far my favorite because it's a love story. He went from revenge story, revenge to a love, it's between two men, but it's still a love story. So it got me on a very deep emotional level. Also, like that era is my era. Mm -hmm. The stuff, everything, the TV was like, I'm telling you, it tickled me on a way, I don't know yeah. if it can. Well, the people who work so hard to make it in the business who don't reach the highest levels, mm -hmm. I mean, there's something so sympathetic and that's, about oh, how yeah. many people love I mean, movies and they don't get, only a few people get to that it's, level. it's one of the most emotionally moving movies I've ever seen. And I say that it, it is behind Saving Private Ryan because Saving Private Ryan like is my father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. World War II 
when he at the end of the movie mm -hmm. when ryan is now like I don't know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Was, Speed uh, it up, and he and he's now the present day Ryan in the late nineties. I mean, he looked exactly the kind of shirt my father wore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I watched it in the theater, I was twenty minutes after the movie ended, I was still in the seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah crying. Right. Yeah, like I had my father died like six years earlier, and I think I had su suppressed as yeah, you do yeah. until. I saw that. No, that's it just what, it just kind of all no, came out happened, that night, like, and I was like on a first date. Yeah, <laughs> this wow. poor girl must Try be like poor girl. Like, Jesus oh, Christ. Poor girl. Was she next to you or in the lobby waiting? What a <laughs> this incel is like fucking crying his eyes out on the first date. What a fucking pussy cab. <laughs> All right, I have to go back to my day job. And now, Miss Pat. I've been excited to talk to you for a while, so um, I'm in a good mood. How about you? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you a drink? Oh, I got a drink. I don't, I don't, oh, you have a drink already? Yeah, I don't want any of your tobacco, but that's uh, right. I'm, I'm gonna take your drink. <laughs> right. No, I don't want to be a bad influence, but too late for that shit. <laughs> I'm fifty now. Really? You're fifty? Yeah. Fifty. Well. Oh, well, you know, black don't crack. I was but, gonna say talent don't crack. Well, my knees get giving out, so I'm. I'm I feel fifty, 50. some days. You look fantastic. Thank it's you. Unbelievable. Thank you. Must be quite a uh, quite a ride you're on now. I mean, to be blowing up like this, as the kids say, it, <laughs> mu it must feel very good. Uh, it took twenty years, but uh, yeah. not it bad at all. Takes everybody twenty years. It do take twenty years. You know, they say if you if you still in it at the ten, something good might happen well, to you. Well, comedy takes a long time. It does. Uh, music flowers early, but then it's usually gone early too. Yeah. You know, musicians, you know, you can be a big star at 20 and be a has-been at 30 or, you know. But comedy, you can do it when you're 100. You can. Joan Rivers died doing it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she wasn't quite 100, but yes, George Burns, I think, almost was 100. So, um, so yeah, you're just getting started. Yeah, 20 years. and I mean, I was hoping it happened, it happened. It would have been nicer in my thirties, but I think I appreciate it more in my fifties. Well, you're you're you say you're only fifty now. Yeah. Well, okay, so you got the whole decade ahead of you. Fifties is nothing. Sixty, that gets a little. <laughs> that's a that's a little bit of a slap in the face. You you you. It's sixty is different than fifty. I'm just going to tell you. Okay, what's different? Well, fifties, I for the me. I mean, you you know your mileage could be very different. Um, for me, the 50s was like more of a continuation of the 40s. It was, a, you know, everything that was good was a little better. Like I had a little more control, a little more recognition, you know, everything that was accruing in a good way. And also anything that was bad was a little, you know, but on a, on a 60, I feel, is a different stage of life. It's like, you know, I think when I was 60, I remember doing a piece about it, and the, one of the jokes was like, "You're among old people, you're the youngest. Mm. You're like almost officially part of that category. What, you're my, on the younger half, but you're still in. Uh, that's how the world sees you, and you know, and your body also becomes more fragile. You've got to really take care of it. Well, my kids think I'm old as hell. <laughs> Well, fucking kids always think the parent is old, of course. Well, my daughter is 14 years younger than me, and she still think I'm old. And I'm like, excuse me, you about to be 40, sweetheart. So she's a millennial. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she's a 30. Well, she must be crazy proud of you. She is. She is. I had a really young. She saw a lot. But yeah, she's, they, all my kids, I have four of them. They're, they're pretty proud of their mom. What do they think? I mean, it must blow their minds that mom is like, a celebrity and, you know, people are putting her on TV and giving her deals and she's got all this money coming in. I mean, that kind uh, Don't talk about the money. I ain't got no money. That's that, that, that. <laughs> uh, I don't give them my damn money. I but know you have money now. I, I do. I'm okay. I, mean, but know what, I know what you're on and what you're doing. I know what the, the pay parameters are. It's not minimum wage you're working for. It's, it's not minimum wage, yeah. but... Uh, you no, know, maybe it goes fast because you got all these kids. Oh, it don't go fast because I don't give them shit. 
<laughs> really? No, I'm not that type of mom. I, I did give them jobs on my show. I give them jobs for me, but I'm not going to hand you my money. Nobody hand me my money. I like that. So, you know. I think America needs more of that with the kids. Y- yeah. I'm on the warpath about shitty parenting, ease, too easy parenting. I think it's the, this absolute seed of what has ruined America uh, is a lot, uh, it's to a great degree. I mean, it's many things, but the fact that parents, first of all, they let kids out of school without knowing anything. Mm-hmm. That's horrible parenting. Kids, you can be a high school graduate and be a complete fucking idiot about the most basic things like history, science, you know, spelling, uh, that's bad parenting, and just letting kids think that they have a automatically have an equal voice at the table. You know, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of my friends say that they let, let them vent. I say only vents is in my fucking house is connected to the air condition. <laughs> what am I? You don't pay no bills, so why am I? Let, why do I need to hear your bullshit? I don't. You don't pay no bills. So why do I need to let you vent? Yeah. If you want to vent, they say it's called a diary. Go find some paper and write that shit down <laughs> and read it in 20 years and see how stupid you really was. If you, I mean. So you tell your kids this. Yeah, I tell my kids. I tell them all the time, go to hell. I mean, I don't owe you nothing. I mean, you look, I told them, I said, I had a choice and I kept you. You couldn't have been here. I could have right. sent you back to heaven or hell, wherever right. God created you from. <laughs> but I chose to carry you right. for nine months right. and have you, so I don't owe you anything. Right. If anybody, they owe you. Yeah, and that's what I told. I told my I tell my daughter all the time, right. and my son. I said, dude, I had y'all at fourteen and fifteen. Y'all weren't supposed to be here. Right. You know, I chose to keep you. You should have been somewhere in a job. Right. You <laughs> like the kids after you. <laughs> I fucking kept you. Yes. So you know, I, I you have grown. Keep a keep a jar on the shelf whenever they give you some lip. Just point to it. Look, just, just point to the jar. Look, just like, shake it. Look, just give them could, a look and point at the jar. Like mm. you could have easily been spaghetti, bitch. Be quiet. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I think I got pretty good kids. But you know, some of them do think that you owe them something. This country, I tell you is going to uh, be shocked on election day, I predict, in November, when they find out how much Americans of both parties care about abortion as an issue. Because since the Supreme Court took it away, Mm -hmm. uh, we have a few indications, like the people in Kansas got to vote on it. Kansas, a very conservative state, and they overwhelmingly were like, uh uh-uh. uh, we do not want to have kids we don't want. Well, the thing is, is why is there a bunch of soft dick? Can I curse? Uh, what can, You're at Club how, Random for fuck's How can a bunch of soft dick men, white men, make decisions on vagina that they can't even touch if they wanted to? They, their penis don't even work. If your penis work, you shouldn't even have a have say so about what I can do with my vagina. And even if it well, does work, you shouldn't have a say so. And in a so, way, we have to bring white men into this because, <laughs> because Clarence Thomas is probably well, the he, most anti-abortion. No, he's white. He's white. He just got a good tan. No, <laughs> we, that's we, not we, fair. We, we let y'all have Clarence Thomas for uh, vanilla ice. Vanilla ice. <laughs> but people in this country, that is going to really the light a fire because it's not like these other issues you know ukraine it's important i couldn't agree more with the it is impeachable but it's very far away and a lot of people never heard of it a lot of things people never heard of you know what they heard of babies they've heard of babies and when you don't want a baby you really it's it's not like uh, you know, a piece of gym equipment that, you know, oh, God, I guess another one that'll just sit in the closet <laughs> be in the garage in six months. You know, it's kind of a big thing, and it's going to be there forever. And, you know, I'm, I'm just saying the way people raise their kids and how fucking bratty kids are these days, it's just not a great advertisement for children as a product. Well, before it became illegal, people were still getting it. So people are going to get it regardless, I think. But get abortions? Yes, but still, I don't understand why 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 do they even have to vote on that? This is my body. You sh- I shouldn't well, be forced to have anything or do anything no. that I don't want to. No, I look, I'm pro choice like you are, but I also think 
They should not tell the people who are pro-life, you're anti-women, you hate women. It's not about that. They don't hate women. They think it's murder. And if you think it's murder, then you can't be, well, except if you have a vagina, then you can murder people. If you think that's a murder, it's a murder. You're talking about hating women. That's their point of view. Uh, I personally... Uh, never have thought that life was necessarily precious. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, really? Like okay. some, I mean, normally it is, but I mean, if you think about a, <clears throat> you know, some horrific mass murderer, remorseless, who killed lots of people for no good reason and is rotting in prison and will never see the light of day, and he's in a little cell in solitary, is that life precious? What is he living for? He's just continuing breathing. Uh, that doesn't break my heart if we put that guy to death. And people who are okay. never born, I mean, sorry, we won't miss you. How could we? We had never met you. And you won't miss <laughs> us because you never met us. What? You know, that makes me think when, my, when I was pregnant with my girlfriend. <laughs> with your what? My girlfriend was pregnant. My, one of my friends was pregnant. Yeah. And we was pregnant at the same time. And she used to get so mad because she used to talk to her stomach which I thought was the dumbest shit ever. And she was like, you don't talk to the baby. How the baby gonna get to know you? I'm like, I don't know the fucking baby. I feed the baby. When the baby <laughs> get here, I know the fucking baby. Right. I might not even like the baby. So why my mother, she would put headsets on her stomach so the baby can listen to music. Right. I'm like, I'm not doing that dumb shit, okay? <laughs> so she would just talk to her stomach all the time. And I, I just thought it was <laughs> the dumbest shit in the world. I'm like, if the baby's in there, she's trying to rest and you fucking with her by putting this music on and she don't, she's not even familiar with it. The baby don't want to hear this bullshit. So <laughs> and the baby wants you to shut the fuck up because that's why the baby right. kicking. Like, can you shut the fuck up, please? Right. <laughs> How were your pregnancies? Were they difficult? Um, my first two, I was really young. I had that first baby at 14, and I was back on my bike in two days. I was going to say, you know, it's, of course, too young, we know, uh, probably mature-wise for people, uh, certainly in modern society, to have children at that age. But nature is not against it. Nature is okay with, with getting pregnant and having children at that young age. Or else uh, it wouldn't happen. Uh, yeah, and I mean, it's probably easier because your body is so, uh, res, you know, resilient. Well, I'm not going to encourage this. No, no, I'm not it, saying it we should. Out. I'm just saying nature. Yeah, and, the, and much of the world still does that. You know. Well, with my first two, it was a lot easier than my last two. I was in my late twenties, yeah. and um, I had my first one at fourteen and fifteen, and I mean, the babies just popped right out. I. I had horrible labors with my last two kids. I had to have a surcharge where they sew up your womb because right. it was weak and right. um, it was. I was sick all the time. But first, ba first two baby. I mean, I was back riding my bicycle back at school like nothing had happened. Right. Yeah. I mean, again, nature not <laughs> well, <laughs> not, you, not obeying the laws of wokeness <laughs> uh, is all about that. And you know, there are parts of the world, I'm sure. You know where uh, you're an old maid at 21. It's like uh, they, they're, there's village, um, <laughs> you know, mores probably, and I don't know where uh, the uh, tribal areas of Pakistan or something, where I'm guessing that most of the births happen before 20. Yeah, but you're not an old maid here in America. They want you at 21 in America. Now, I'm an old maid in America. <laughs> Actually, the, the biggest trend, especially out here uh, in L.A., you know, which is sort of like pretty boy country. Yeah. This is a, this is a MILF city. It is. <laughs> There's a lot of, you see more like women of certainly your age, you know. That is not out of bounds for a lot of the, the guys, especially young guys here. Well, they like that, you they know, want especially their, like they, you, you have money, you take care of them. Oh, no, the fuck I cannot. I was about to say, they want handicapped parking stickers and social security checks. So they come over during the nighttime and play with all old titties and go out and hang out with the younger girls while we're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that may be that may be true. That too. is true. You know. Is that really true? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I, I mean, I've been married almost thirty years. I don't want no young guy that right. can go for twenty minutes. And you've been you married know. thirty years. Almost, yeah. Wow. Yeah, same that's a, guy to the same guy. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really quite a thing. Yeah. And still good. I love him some days. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never got married. Really? Yeah. Uh, you ain't missing shit. <laughs> <laughs> you just missing somebody to share your fucking TV with. You could do that with a girlfriend and send her home. <laughs> we are brought to you by SignalWire. SignalWire powers the future of cloud communications. Built by the tech OGs, the original geeks of software defined telecom. Their mission is to make it simple for you to build whatever you can imagine using real time voice, video, or text messaging. The OGs at SignalWire have spent decades solving the most complex and awkward problems in communications. Except when at Christmas, your uncle makes a huge deal of coming out of the closet to the whole family when everybody already knew 10 years ago. But for the computer related communications problems, SignalWire has you covered. From broadcast quality video to ultra low latency voice and messaging, SignalWire has the APIs and SDKs to create unique and intelligent communications experiences from within existing applications or websites or building a new app from scratch. Join the millions of other customers like Amazon, Ring, and Home Depot who are using SignalWire technology to build the communications experiences of the future. And in the spirit of the holiday season, SignalWire wants to give you a gift. Visit SignalWire.com slash random and claim a free t-shirt when you sign up for a demo. Go to SignalWire.com slash random and claim your free t-shirt. Go to SignalWire.com slash random. Or, well, I mean, you bring up TV with marriage. It's interesting because when I get into bed at night, what I have to do, the last thing I always have to do in the day is TV. I know it's not the best thing for sleep um, because you don't really want to be looking at screens before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It tells your body to wake up. So phones, computers, but I have to watch TV before I go to bed. It's the most passive thing. It's enjoyable, but like very few things keep my interest for more than like 15, 20 minutes. So I'll mm -hmm. watch like 15 minutes of one movie, 15 minutes of another. What? You look at me like I'm, that's the most insane thing you've ever heard. Well, you don't finish, you, you're never going to know what happens. No, then tomorrow I'll watch another 15 minutes. It'd be like reading, look, when you read a book, you don't read the whole book at once. Well, if I watch it's good the, enough, some people can't stop flipping the pages if you got time. A page turner, yeah. Yeah, but if you if you were just watching 15 of this movie and 15 of that movie. And 15, it, Tomorrow I'll watch the next 15 minutes. Well, how the hell are you going to remember what you saw if I, you just watched three 15-minute movies? <laughs> because I remember, because it's not that hard. I mean, when I turned it off last night, uh, Liam Neeson was going over to kill the Albanians. I, it's not that hard to pick it up at the point where he's in Albania killing Albanians. Well, oh, I get look, it. Well, you know, you, I ain't gonna say what I was gonna say. Say it. <laughs> Lil Neeson do the same movie, so I well, can see why you're well, doing 15 I, I, minutes. Man, perhaps that's why that name sprung <laughs> into my head. But I love you, but yeah. uh, it's all everybody keep kidnapping oh, his know. fucking family. I'm I like, know. if y'all give him one more fucking, he's shameless. Yeah, he, he, he really is. <laughs> just, like, just send him to. He I, did. He did one where it was on a plane. And then I swear to God, they took the exact same script and just changed plane to train. And, <laughs> and it was the same exact story. I, I, think I know, they, right? you like, uh, how many times they going to take your damn family, man? You need to change them to the front of the house. Damn, your family can't. Why they get kidnapped like this? They, you need to take them somewhere on a, on a little black drive-by so they can learn some shit. Take them to the hood and keep show them how not to get kidnapped. That daughter, that wife, the cat, the dog, they done stole his dishes. <laughs> there was lines like, uh, if you shoot me, you'll never get off this train. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will, because they got to make another one with you at the house with the next kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to fly this train into a mountain. <laughs> As Bill making fun of you, not me. Oh, uh, Liam Neeson and I have beef. <laughs> really? Yeah, because uh, he is a big supporter of uh, torturing horses by having them uh, carry stupid motherfuckers around Central Park. You know, the but those handsome cabs in New York where the... It's a carriage where the horse is... You don't like carriages? I don't like torturing animals. Is that torturing an animal? 
I, I would no guess this, that if you saw a horse in the wild, you wouldn't think it was dreaming about standing and shitting in a bucket and carrying tourists around a park. No, I, I don't think that's what the horse was looking to do when it was born and you you see them. Well, fuck, you just mess me up on, on the times I get on them. Now I'm going to be thinking about you every time I get ready. Hey, you need a ride. <laughs> what, you get in you get, you get in horse-drawn carriages, Miss Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! I ain't saying shit to you. No, I want to. I want to know about this this carriage <laughs> fetish you have. I mean, kids use them for proms. Uh, right. They use them for proms. They yes. use them for funerals. I'm an animal lover. I'm against all that kind of shit. I am too. I just don't own any. <laughs> you don't have pets. No, I got too many fucking kids to have animals. You, <laughs> you know, my hats go off to people who can have an expensive dog. I had a dog back in the day where you could tie him up to the tree. You do that shit today, you're going to jail. So, really? Yeah, you can't tie no dog up to no tree anymore. Why, Why is that hurting a dog? Well, they say you can't tie him up anymore, so oh I don't sit and tie him up. Well, that's they, ridiculous. They walk him, they pick up their shit. I, we never did that when I was a kid. We tied the dog to the tree all the time. Yeah, but you can't be tying the dog. He had a chain. It wasn't like he chain. was choking. Yeah, and you he know. had a dog house. And now, now they're in the bed. They they got on high heel shoes and they wear clothes and, you know, they get their vagina <laughs> waxed when the owner get their vagina waxed. So I'm not fucking no animal. I got kids. <laughs> but your <laughs> kids are grown, aren't they? No, but I, I have custody of my niece. How old's the kids. youngest one? In my house, nine. Nine? Yes. You had a baby nine years ago? No, I did not. Oh. I had somebody <laughs> give me a fucking baby nine years ago. My niece. On purpose? Uh, well, I went to help her because she was on drugs. And so oh. I picked her up and the baby was newborn two weeks. And she just ran off and left me with the fucking kids. Really? So I had them. It's four of them. The oldest is 14. The baby is nine. I saw that in an episode of Euphoria where they just leave a baby with somebody. I mean, and that's so good of you that you, like, I mean, you could have, like, brought it to a foster home or something and... Well, that's not the first set of kids I've raised. I raised her mom, and then I raised uh, my other sister-in-law kids. So that's my third set of kids that I've raised. Oh, it wasn't mine. M G. Wow, you and I are have some real big differences. <laughs> Fuck yeah, we do. <laughs> I mean, I have always avoided kids like long COVID. I mean, look, I understand they're popular. They must be. Even celebrities do it, but. Why? I mean, they're just, um, well, I, I just never got it because, like, babies, I, I'm not, I'm very meticulous about, like, snot and shit. I hate all that stuff. Well, you, if you had a wife, she, it, uh, if you have a come wife, on, you, I mean, <laughs> well, you, there, there's who, another deal breaker. Mark, another thing you, I don't you want. You fucking have a nanny. <laughs> You're not going to be no Wait, you, uh, nanny. Back up for my hate kids. <laughs> A wife. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a you can no. have a nanny. You never have to deal with snobs and bobs and right. bullshit. No, I I do know guys. I do. I know guys who have never changed the diaper. Yeah. They they have wives and nannies. That's what it is. Yeah. And uh, but I worry about that one moment when the wife and the nanny are both somehow incapacitated at the same time, and the baby has shit in his drawers, and it's on me. And I think well, that you baby would get used to having it's shit. It's just in less. What? I mean, it's just more. What? Have you take off your underwear? You had shit in your underwear. The babies have a little bit more than you do. Wait, you I just don't have. What do you mean I have shit in my underwear? <laughs> All <laughs> men's got shit in the underwear. I don't. Y'all don't wipe good. <laughs> I do. I'm telling you, this is, you're talking to <laughs> anal retentive. You, you've heard the term? No, but no? I. <laughs> you never heard anal retentive or somebody when they heard talking about somebody being anal? Yeah. Okay. Anal means very neat, very fastidious. Okay. Well, you wipe your ass real good. It, okay. The baby would just help shit in his pamper. <laughs> you can wipe this shit off your baby pamper. It's your I, baby. You know what? I would. If it came to it, of course I would because I'm not a bad person. But, but I'd have nightmares about it for months. Well, what are you, 60 something? You have no kids. Mm -hmm. uh, who the fuck are you going to leave all your money to? The cat? Peter, the people who prevent horses from having to be tortured. That's who gets my money. Well, I love it. My sister. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not going to go through my whole will. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, I just want to make sure. I, my, but it would be nice to leave a kid I set up I right. think I left my 45s to Scott in New Jersey, <laughs> who I went to school with. Um, but no, um, you know, I don't know. Yes, I... I uh, Somebody would carry the baby and raise it and then bring it back when you're ready to fool no, with there's it. There's a, a series of very good causes that are all politically correct that I'm <laughs> leaving my money to. Uh, PETA, uh, reading to blind children. Uh, th 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 I could go through the whole okay, list and stop. pat myself on the back. Okay, but, okay. You know. PETA, get ready. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Hopefully 30, 40 years from now. No, I mean... Uh, I have no problem like spending it while I'm here. It's just that I don't have expensive tastes. Like I, there's nowhere else I'd rather be right now than here with you at Club Random. And it didn't cost me anything. I just came across the lawn. <laughs> you sound like my husband, Bill. He don't want to do shit. He just retired. Oh, so really? I, well, yeah. After the show got his second season, uh, I was like, dude, retire. I'm ready to leave fucking Indiana. I hate Indiana. Oh, um, Indiana. Yeah, we lived there for 15 years because he worked at General Motors. What city? Plainfield, Indiana. Where is that? You know, you, let me tell you the history of Plainfield. When Mike Tyson did his time for that rape charge, he did it right in front of the house I lived in. Is that right? Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a prison now. And that's what that community was known for, Mike Tyson doing their t his time at that jail. I love playing Indianapolis. That really? is an awesome crowd. Yeah, I love it. They support me. That's where my comedy careers took off. But I'm from Atlanta. I'm from the South. Mm. I just wanted to go back home. Well, Indiana, yeah. I mean, other than like the the college town, Blooming Bloomfield, is, Bloomington. That's another good city. Indianapolis. Any place where you know cities, you're going to have a mostly liberal audience, but they're in a red state, so they're not like crazy liberal. They're just no, they're good not crazy. Liberal. They're so good. they're perfect. I love Indianapolis. I must say, other than that, the only time I've been to Indiana was once I emergency landed in Gary. <laughs> <laughs> emergency landed in Gary? Exactly. <laughs> that was there an emergency. <laughs> that bitch looked like somebody blew it up I, I down ain't, there. <laughs> I'm like, what? I ain't lying. We were trying to get into Chicago. This is about, oh my gosh, like 13 years ago, and there was a fucking electrical storm going around. I mean, when you looked out of the plane, everywhere you looked was lightning. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a private plane. There's a little seven-seater. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think Delta of would land in Gary, Indiana. And I remember Bill the Mark, Come on now. <laughs> Delta and <laughs> yeah. in, in Gary, come Indiana? On. Ain't a, no damn no, way. You have made you. it to Chicago. <laughs> thank you. So I remember hearing the pilot say, we got to put this on the ground now, which is not the thing you want to overhear the pilot say. But they did. And that's where it was. Now, yeah, and we had to, because the airfield was closed, we had to climb over the fence. Oh, I loved it. Wow. I loved it. Well, at least you didn't land in downtown, Gary. <laughs> 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 that would have been some shit for you, Bill, because I've been downtown, Gary. Isn't that where the Jackson 5 are from? They're from Gary, yes. 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 Right. But it looked like a bomb been through that bitch. Really? <laughs> it really do. Well, not their fault. Yeah, Gary. So, okay, so how long have you been in California? I don't live here. I live in Atlanta. Oh, okay. I just come here for, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, that's right. I could never live here. I, you I couldn't? Can't, no, I don't like this place. Why? Um, I just, it's snooty? It, it's everybody face Clicky. pulled back. Everybody jogging in spandex pants. Everybody eating <laughs> asparagus. <laughs> You know, I want to be around another well, fat motherfucker like me. I see. What I don't want to. I yeah. don't want to be. Uh, I don't know. So it, all the cliches about California are come alive for you when you're in LA, which I, which they do. Pretty much, everybody right. is doing something. You know, everybody lying. It's just so much bullshit. Nobody right. tells you the truth. Nobody in this city tells you the fucking truth. Well, my line was always, at least we're honest about being phony. Oh, now, well, that can, might be real. You can on, argue with that, but there is some truth to that. Because uh, not to pick more fights with New York, because I certainly loved, I've lived in New York twice. I grew up in the area. My father worked there every day. I love my New York, but I, didn't, I never wanted to live there the two times I lived there. And I, I found it, like, hypocritical that they 
put on themselves this mantle of, oh, New York, we're so much more sophisticated because we have the museums and the... How often do you go to a museum? I always want to say to these people, how do you, when do you act? Okay, you live near the museum, but it doesn't actually rub off on you. I found them to be just like anywhere else, people anywhere else, uh, not more sophisticated than the people. It's where you live. I mean, I mean, who you hang out with with where you live. Most of the people I hang out with here in LA are ex New Yorkers. Mm. And I'm lucky. I've lived here 40 years. I came out with a crew of comedians. I had this support group. We're still friends. And you meet people along the way. Lots of people like to live in LA. You look at most celebrities, even people who aren't celebrities who they can, they want Prince fucking Harry and Mrs. Harry. They live here. Why does everyone want to live here? I don't know. I, I, I rather live in Atlanta. I rather, you know. Oh, I, Atlanta's awesome too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's it's a baby Hollywood. Well, you know, it's yes. the same there. It's getting there. You know, and plus, you know, it, it's also it's, the it's, black it's, capital of America. That's another reason. <laughs> <laughs> As long as we're talking real, right, Miss Pat? I don't want to be around everybody that don't look like exactly. me. I can take a mixture of people, but God, right. that's what was wrong with Indiana. It was so fucking white. All they did was bake pies. I was like, uh, bake pies and go to church. I'm like, do you bitches know anything else exactly. than serving your man? Exactly. <laughs> so I just, I just, I mean. Right. You got the right. Yeah, I you don't, don't want to be around. Absolutely. I want to be around diverse, you know. You want to be happy. Whatever makes you happy. And being that in should be enough for happy. all of us. And the real estate is a lot cheaper. And it is. You can, you and know. It's, and it's happening. It's a happening town. It's awesome. Atlanta's awesome. It's, you know, there's a f Chicago I adore. You know, I me. wouldn't live in Chicago for shit, but well, Chicago is nice. No? Oh my god. No. Really? No. Chicago that's a different type of bread of people up there. Is that right? Yeah, it's right. I think I am. I love Chicago. I mean, it's. I like to perform there. I like. I love right. the little club zanies. Um, I, that's my spot. But I wouldn't live there. I just rather live in Atlanta. Well, it's too cold to live there in the Very winter. Much. Snow uh, is in Indiana, and wigs don't oh, mix. Oh yes, no. So no, I. I mean, why people live in? really punishingly cold climates now that it is an option not to. I never understand. I get it when you are a nomad of yesteryear by 10,000 years and you had to live here in the tundra because if you migrated south, this other tribe would kill you or something like that, your food supply. I, but why would you live? I mean, I have been to these places, not in many years because I wouldn't go, but I've played uh, Minneapolis in just December, Cold. where like you walk out of the hotel and you're like, oh, it's not that bad. And then you walk one block and you go, oh, fuck, I need to get indoors like right now because I think. I'm going to die. <laughs> 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 because it's painful. It's not just, it's like, ooh, it's not like, ooh, cold. It's like, uh-oh, well, I'm I was, worried. In Minneapolis, it's, it gets, I was so cold oh. one time, I, I felt my lips swelling. Yeah. You feel like, I felt like I had a fucking lip job by the time I right. got in. Right. So I, I don't, it, <laughs> it is so, I, and I hate cold weather, like freezing cold, like snow and stuff Me like that. Too. I can take Atlanta. Atlanta gets yeah. about 60 something and we down there freezing. Now that I've been in Indiana 15 years, I can handle it. Yeah, Atlanta's very, I mean, it's kind of like this weather, except probably a little more humid in mm -hmm. the summer. It's hot as fuck. Right, but it's also, we get hot too, but we don't, see, this is desert weather. That's why I think it's so desirable, is that it's always cool at night, even if it's blazing hot in the day, and it's not that, that humidity. I wish we had some humidity because we have no fucking water out here, and we're all just going to roll up and die at some point because I don't know, I don't know where the, I don't know where the shit is coming from when I turn on the tap because we never rain, never rains. Um, but somehow I'm drinking it right now, and somehow it still comes out. But uh, you bought that. That's why you got that. <laughs> <laughs> that did not come from your fucking tap. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're probably right. <laughs> okay. But it does. Yeah. You know. I hope you're not drinking it out the tap. <laughs> but no, I I love Atlanta. I was there. Do you know my friend Killer Mike? I've never met Killer Mike. You should. I should, oh, but can I, I, I can I arrange this? 
Yes, you can. Please, you'd love him. He's been here at Club Random. Really? Oh, yes. I I was in Atlanta um, last November. We went out to his favorite club, the Blue Flame. No, they did not take you to fucking Blue Flame. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> How many holes was on you, Bill Maher? I know they was on you. I, I, I know them holes was on you, because if I was a hoe and Bill Maher walked into the blue frame on Bankhead, I would be like, ching, ching. You would have had so many colored titties on your shoulder. I, I, I told him this I told this story when he was on, but I'll tell it to you. So, like, you know, people have to understand the blue flame is like... A raggedy-ass strip club. It's not raggedy-ass. It's quite nice. Well, they don't remodel it. It's quite nice. It's, I mean, uh, there's another one called the Magic oh, City. Magic City and okay. Cheaters. Which, okay, but Magic City, I've heard that name before. By the Magic Atlanta. City is where okay. all the celebrities go. Well, I said that. I said to Mike, he said, I want to take you out. Uh, I said, Magic City. He said, please, that's where the tourists go. Mm-hmm. Okay, he said, I'm going to take you to place, and that's his neighborhood. He grew up. I did this, too. This is killer. Okay. In the same neighborhood? Not. All up and down. We used to live in a place called Bankhead Court. That highway used to be called Bankhead Court, but they changed it. But we, if you from my line, you still say Bankhead. Okay. So um, he says, I'm going to take you to the Blue Flame. And, you know, and with his wife, I mean, I've sent people, I think, sometimes hear strip club and they think, oh, nefarious, whatever. No, it's more like an after hours club. It is. Yes. I mean, yes. Are there naked girls dancing? Yes. And they're very, it's interesting. I've never seen a club quite like this where as soon as you sit down, the girls come over and start dancing, you know, very energetically right in front of you. Like, you don't have to ask <laughs> or talk to them first. And that, like, I don't, it's too How much. How much money did you it's spend? A, I'm going to tell you this, where okay. I'm going with this story. <laughs> so Mike, Mike comes back with like a stack of ones, like, I mean, just as, as, as long as a, a, a well-endowed man's penis. A very big <laughs> stack of ones. Okay. <laughs> and then he... And That's then, your way of saying black dick. But keep going, Bill Maher. No. Keep the fuck going. <laughs> <laughs> you in the black script club. I know what you want. Oh, a stack of money like a big old black dick. But I, I did, don't know if I, I just said big old black dick. I did not say that. I did <laughs> yeah, not Yeah, you said well and down, man. But I keep did, going. I Tell could, your story about it. Could have been anybody. Like, I could have been talking about myself, <laughs> Oh, Pat. bullshit. Keep going, Bill Maher. <laughs> okay. So... Like and I like I'm like Mike. I am not throwing singles. I find it demeaning. It's what? gross. Singles. I mean, it's I. I just there's something about that I cannot do. And so this girl, yeah, you know, they start dancing in front of. Me. She's. I said, please, just sit down. You don't have to like <laughs> stop. Just you're that interrupting hello, people work. Hello, how you doing? Nice to meet they you. They don't want to get to know you. They and want she was like, money in their panties. And I just, I gave her a hundred dollar bill. And I just said, this is how I do it. <laughs> and she and, probably and had. suddenly it got, we just all just chilled. Did she sit down with you? Yes, then she, <laughs> she was very glad she sat down. Yes, and we had a lovely conversation, and she didn't have to dance. Did we she know who you was? No, of course not. I bet you she did. I bet you she didn't. I bet you she took a picture of your I'll, ass and did a reverse I'll Google search. I bet you a... A I bet you she did a, I bet you. I know hoes. I got a lot of friends that's hoes. And if a white man come into a black script club, you think <laughs> I'm not going to take a picture of your ass well, and do a reverse uh, Google search? I and was, it's going to say, Bill Maher, ching, ching, let me put this phone away and talk all night. Um, <clears throat> me and my friend who travels with me, we were the only white people in there. I will I will say that. Okay. How and much money you spend? Oh, I, you know, I mean, like... I feel like if that's what you're doing for a living, which is a hard job, I think it's a very hard job. I tip everybody big. One of the great perks of having money is tipping in 50s and 100s. Maids. 50s and 100s at the Blue Flame? And everywhere. Oh. Maids, waiters, valet parkers. Like it, it can, you know, you can give a lot of money to charity, you never really see it. And you're not even sure if it goes to where it's supposed True. to be going. But you can see someone's eyes light up with those denominations. That is one of the better things about uh, having uh, I agree. money and know a bunch of fucking kids I have to spend it on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got, yeah, you can go to the blue you know, flame and get right. a stack of 50s and not miss them <laughs> when you don't have kids. I don't get That's them. why Killer Mike had ones, because he got babies. <laughs> I don't get them. I bring them. 
<laughs> oh, you bring the fitness with you? <laughs> well, you well, there's no fifty dollar machine at the Blue Flame. But you can. <laughs> well, they got a, they got singles. That's so, what they're selling over there. Let me ask you. So uh, he probably spent way more than I did. He just did it in singles. Yeah, but he I got a lot more entertainment than you did because you probably ran out of your fifties first. I don't want entertainment. I don't want. I I don't want trouble in a strip club. I just want to kill some time, and you know, like I I've been to strip clubs like with other guys who like never go because their wife wouldn't let them and that kind of shit, and they're always like <laughs> they're like panting like a fucking golden retriever <laughs> and i'm like calm down you think the greatest thing in the world is going to happen because whatever is in your fantasy mind about strip clubs i said the way you handle a strip club is act like you're in a normal bar or club and then everything that happens that's better than that is gravy so like if you were in a regular bar and a pretty girl came up to you and wanted to start talking to you you'd be like this is fucking great. Well, that's going to happen in a strip club. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so just be happy with that. You're not going to get blown in the champagne room. You're too fucking calm. I know people hate partying with you. You like, Just calm down. And your horny friend who got a family been probably banging the same woman forever right. with kids, bored and tired, and you take them to a script club and they're acting like a hound dog, and you tell them to calm down. Calm you, down. What are you telling them to calm down? What I'm telling them to do is lower expectations, you know, so that if you, again, if you think of it as just a regular club, a regular bar you're in, then whatever happens that's better than happens in the other, the regular bar, is going to seem awesome. Whereas if you think you're going to have some magical night, that's not going to happen at a strip club. It just isn't. Well, I don't go to strip clubs. Right. But, but it's, it is a big thing to do Me in Me neither. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but I have to put you with Mike. Because yeah, but also, not to the strip club. I don't want to see no okay. same vagina because no, no. I don't want to see my own vagina. No. <laughs> okay? I don't want to see no naked women because that, that ain't what I do. Why don't you, why don't you want to see your own vagina? Uh, I'm done. <laughs> done caring for it? You're not done using it. Uh, I'm okay. But I don't want to see no naked pussy. I'm sorry. Right. I don't want... No, you shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, why? No. But you, that's what you see when you go to strip club. But I've heard Blue Flame got... Did you eat? I heard the chicken yeah. wings are oh, really good. You are adorable. The idea of eating in a strip club, I mean... <laughs> people go there for lunch in Atlanta. Yes. Um, people do a lot of things. <laughs> You didn't eat the chicken wings at you know, Blue Flame? Johnny you Depp get... wears five scarves. I, I mean, people do a lot of weird things. I mean, I just don't get it. But <laughs> Did you just say Johnny Depp wore five scarves? Yes. I'm just, he was going I'm, through some shit, okay? I'm just I saying. I think he's scarfless Pete, now. <laughs> I can't account for what people do. But I personally would not have a meal at a strip club. Oh, it's you just missed not the best shit. Really? The chicken wings are so good at Magic City and Blue Flame. I've never had a chicken wing. That's not my kind of food. You you don't eat chicken wings? No, I'm remember I'm the LA person <laughs> why you don't want to live here. <laughs> I well, eat the I eat the sprouts. I eat the well, You don't go no fucking sprouts in there. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Right. No, I don't I don't know chicken wings. You don't eat the, It's not good for you. I know, but it is so popular. What is a chicken wing? Is it the actual wing of the chicken? Yeah, they 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 make the, why they is got that better. I don't know. They say they got the best recipe at the strip club. But that's not a breast. That's a different part of the No, thing. that's the wing. The wing, yeah. Bill Maher, no. the wing. <laughs> the, the wing. The fake white meat. The wing. The thing yeah. that used to make the chicken fly a little bit. <laughs> you don't know what a chicken I, wing That's is? why I don't eat it, because it wasn't good enough to get the chicken off the ground. <laughs> how, <laughs> how healthy can this piece of meat Real be? Real good, because if he got off the ground, we wouldn't be eating his well, ass. Well, that's, that's right. So why would I want to eat that? Think about it, Ms. Pat. You a vegetarian? <laughs> no, not a vegetarian. You don't eat chicken wings, you just eat the breast? I it's definitely chicken breast, yes. And I think legs, drumstick, you know. Um but wings I feel like is something that you have at a sports bar. Oh, but not at the strip club. Atlanta do it right for this for the strip clubs. With the but, food? Well, that's what they say. I don't go. Right. I went years ago when I was a lot younger. But I don't go now. But you should definitely, next time you're in Atlanta, you go to Blue Flame, you should get yourself some chicken wings. Well, next time in Atlanta, you, me, and Killer Mike are going out together. Yeah. 
you gonna bring fifties, and I'm gonna help you tip the hoes. <laughs> no, no, we're, but we won't go to the strip club. Of oh, course great. not. You don't want to go there. I, no, I don't want no. to go. When we'll I used go to go to the, to the strip what's the finest restaurant? The most five star um, hoi polloi, not hoi polloi. Is that in Atlanta? I don't know. I don't really. No, come on. I, no. You, you must you, be Atlanta royalty at this point. Yeah, you must know what the nicest restaurant is. The nicest restaurant in Atlanta is Chick Fil A. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, you know what? I'm going to find out. Mike will know. Yeah, Mike probably would know. Um, and that's where we're going. It's a lot of them, but I don't really get out like that to go out and eat. Well, you're going to when I come to town. Well, when you come to town, I because will go with you. Because married people are always looking for an excuse to get out of the house like that. Not me. No? No, I not travel one, every not, week. Oh, I'm yeah. never looking for an excuse right, to get out. Right. I go. Now, he stay in the house. That's right. Cause you're I on, get the hell on. Right, because yeah. you're on the road. Yeah, so, I mean, I... Because you're making that buck. Right? I'm trying. Yeah, no, I know you are. I know you keep <laughs> trying to convince me that you're not making a lot of money. <laughs> well, I know, you know what you're bro, doing, and yeah. I know what they pay. Let me say this to you. I'm black, and my family might see this shit. So, I don't oh. got no money. <laughs> <laughs> well... I'm trying to stir you away from okay. that. You keep talking, you making uh, money. Okay. No, I'm not. You can say that, but let the record show I did not. <laughs> I don't even approve. How dare you? <laughs> no, uh, I'm doing okay. <laughs> you're doing well. I'm, I'm having fun. Well, that's part of doing do well, it. but I, money doesn't hurt either. Money don't hurt and a it's thing. It's good that you're getting a lot. Yeah. Now, by the way, is that even really the right way to handle that with family by keeping it a secret? Isn't the right way to just say no? Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just say, yeah, no. just say no. No. Well, I don't. You don't strike me as a person who is uh, has a has trouble saying what they really feel. Oh, I don't have a problem saying the damn thing I want to say. I know you don't. I say it all the time. They be so? like, "Let me borrow." I said, "I'm not Bank of America." I don't, say what? Don't, they'll say, "Let me borrow." Borrow. Borrow. And I say, "No, I, I'm not Bank of America." Well, there you go. I, right. Right. I, I don't. I don't. I've said money. the same thing to people. I've said the words, "I'm a friend, not a bank." Yes, exactly. And uh, and I always felt like the little unsaid implication was, and if you keep asking me this question about money, the friend part could go away too. Yeah. A lot of times after the first act, it kind of go away for me. <laughs> and I've given away, I mean, I, I'm not, uh, I feel like wealth is a fluke. Mm -hmm. Like if you can do something like we can, like tell jokes, you can get well rewarded for it, that's kind of a fluke that wouldn't have happened 500 years ago. So we're lucky. So I acknowledge that. And I think I'm very generous with my money, but not with just people who like, if, if the attitude is, well, I'm okay. I could make my own money, but you have a lot. So can I have some of that? That's, that strikes me wrong. Oh, well, I, I don't have that kind of money for people to say that bill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this shit just happened for me. But, so, but you, uh, my friends uh, throwing out, they still ask for gas money. <laughs> gas you money. You know, can you yeah. help me with my rent kind of money? Right. <laughs> Ain't nobody asking me for no vacation right. money. Uh, <laughs> no. But you got to just establish a hard line on that. This is your money you built with your hard work based on your hard life. Yes. You know, you paid your dues as much as anybody to have what you are now getting. You have sown, and now you are reaping. You are reaping. It's not a group reap. It's not a group reap. Not I, a group reap. You know, I have to tell my kids you reap. much. <laughs> We're not all <laughs> reaping, because we didn't all sow. <laughs> Did y'all hear that, kids? Y'all didn't sow shit. <laughs> <laughs> I sow. I reap. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Maher told me to tell y'all that y'all ain't shit and don't ask. <laughs> ah, that's good. Sowing and reaping with your kids, huh? Yeah, I mean, I have no problem saying no. Good. I'm not, you know, good for you. I, my kids know where I came from. I've never hit nothing about my background from them. You know, they know I sold crack. They know I dropped out of school. They know everything I've been through. So they know I'm not the type that's just going to hand them shit. I hand them all a job. They work on a set. I have a daughter that writes on the show, one that does makeup, one that works in construction. Wow. So you're going to work. I'm not going to give you shit. Yeah. I'm going to give you an opportunity. Yeah. But I'm not going to write you a check. Yeah, that's exactly how it should be done. Yeah. So, you know.
Right. You, you know, exactly. it, I've, I've seen my kids struggle. And, and, oh, and the by way. the way, when parents spoil their kids, they fuck it up from both angles. Yes. They make their life miserable and they fuck up their kids. They do. It's the worst of both worlds. It is. You're miserable because now you've got this monster brat living in your house, this entitled little prick. And you've got a kid who's going to be fucked up because they're going to get out in the world and think the world's going to treat them like they're a super indulgent And they're not going to know how to, to yeah. take rejection. Right. And we have this problem now. Yes, we do. Yeah. We do so, all the time. So you are, you are doing the right thing. You are raising your kids the right way and now you're the crack part what <laughs> look, at those, look at those eyes <laughs> the crack part don't tell me you thought i would everybody no, I knew you were me i always say oh my god you overcame crack i have not did no fucking drugs no, a day no, in my no, life i know i know you sold crack okay good because i did an interview last no. week this says oh my god how did you get off crack i'm like who the hell told you i was on crack i don't even smoke cigarettes so why what are you talking yeah, about? You I don't sold do it. You, I sold crack. Yes. Right. It's different with selling and doing it. A, a, to, a big difference. I mean, you know, don't get high in your own supply is a... Is a real damn thing. Is an adage. I mean, you, I, I remember this album from the Notorious B.I.G. and one of the songs was 10 Crack Rules. <laughs> do you remember that? No. Oh. I think, that, I think that was the name of the song. and It was the 10 Rules About Smoking... But I remember listening to her and thinking, well, these are actually good rules for life in general. <laughs> it really doesn't just apply, <laughs> Mr. G, to crack. <laughs> to crack. But salad. that's what we was dealing so, with. So but, <laughs> the rules were well, were you Well, were you a good uh, crack salesman? I, I, I was. I, I made a lot of money selling crack. <laughs> you know, it's ironic because when, it, when you get the crack salesman in a room, and the head guy says, coffee is for closers. You're like, for fuck's sake, I'm selling crack. <laughs> Do you think I need coffee? <laughs> but, uh, but you know, steak knives, you know, the, I know the, the best salesman in, in the group usually gets some sort of bonus like that, uh, uh, like a trip or something. For who? What are you talking about? Like when you're when you're uh, you and the other crack salesman, aren't there? Isn't no, there a it's, bonus it's, system? You, you acting like I'm selling <laughs> Sears washing machines. What the hell are I'm you fucking, talking about? I'm fucking <laughs> with you. I'm like, I'm, who, I wasn't selling for nobody. No, else. there's this there's this movie called Glen Gary Glen Ross, and it's famous. It's about these these real estate salesmen. And yeah. That, and the famous line is, he says, you know, coffee is for closers. You know, yeah. Because there's like eight of the salesmen. They whoever's like lowest gets fired, but if you're the sell the most, you at, you know, you steak knives or whatever. Yeah. But you're saying that this was more informal, the crack business. Uh, yeah, it was. I, I did it for myself. I didn't work for anybody. Oh, you really? <laughs> yeah, I didn't work for anybody. How did you get the crack? Uh, my kid's father used to sell crack, and then um, he went to jail, and I couldn't pay my rent, so I took my welfare check and bought, uh, I think it was called Where was your supply? What was the, the provenance of your supply? Everybody, you, you had bigger drug dealers than me, but eventually oh, I course. became. Of course, you got to get your. I mean, I was a drug dealer too. You was? What did yeah, you say? When sell? I was at uh, college, I, my father was out of work. I wasn't going to get through with what we had coming in. First, I started with pot. Um, I went from not smoking pot to dealing it in six months because I couldn't afford it. But if you deal it, then you can afford it because when you buy an ounce, uh, I mean, a mm -hmm. pound, it's 16 ounces. But if you make it 17 ounces, <laughs> that's called the head tax. Well, you just give everyone a little light, and then you have one ounce or almost an ounce for yourself. Mm. Come on, you must have you must have cut coke like that. I mean, uh, for fuck's sake, we're drug dealers. Not for dealer. my no no. <laughs> were you were a completely honest drug dealer. You must well, have been no, the, you stepped on it. You know, you stepped on it. Yeah, right. well, yeah, you stepped on okay. it. Okay, so. But Our, you stepped on it for yourself. I yes, exactly. It for and that, but that was just pot. Then me and my partner, um, our pot dealer was getting other drugs. So whatever he got, we got. Mm. O opium, you know, acid, you know, whatever so he... So he was selling it and doing it. He, our dealer? No, you. He looked like he was doing a lot of something. You know, stringy hair, typical drug dealer look. Um, we were college kids, so we just like 
you know, whatever he had, he, we would get a little bit and then sell it to the other college kids. <laughs> you know, oh, wow. that's how I got through college. Well, your corner was safe. You was on college. <laughs> this was Ithaca, New York. There was no corners. I it was, know. I it said was you, quads. That, that's what I'm saying. Your <laughs> well, quads yeah, right. was uh, safe. I was actually <laughs> right. standing on a damn right. corner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was dealing on the quad. <laughs> <laughs> the big quad. Yeah. Uh, Bill Maher. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there was drive-by poetry readings. Oh, my God, it was rough. Uh, no, I mean, I could have been, I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, I could have been arrested back then. We were we were dealing shit. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, college, I guess they don't care. But, yeah, I mean, it's a, I feel like drugs are a product that sells itself. And you know what I tell people all the time? I said, two things I've never <laughs> seen a commercial for is crack and Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> that shit both is good <laughs> they say I can right. testify for Waffle House exactly. but you never seen a crack commercial right. <laughs> and a Waffle House commercial them two fuckers they sell themselves they just sell themselves they sell themselves I've never seen a Waffle House commercial you are too I've seen much. a Huddle House commercial if you remember Huddle so... House but I've never seen a Waffle House commercial you're right they sell themselves. When shit is good, word of mouth is way stronger than any commercial you can ever shoot. Right. When something is good, people going to talk about it. Well, they're talking about you these days. I feel like you're right on the cusp of a great next act in your career. It's very exciting. You must be, you should be, I hope you're enjoying this moment because you're like walking into stardom at a great moment. You know, you have enough experience in your past, so you're not going to fuck it up or, you know, make a mental mistake that fucks it up. But you're still like, I mean, you, you look just like, you know, you don't look 50. <laughs> and this <laughs> is a you. great moment, you know, for comedy and uh, it's just, you just you got a you got a great opening here. I'm enjoying it. You yeah. know, we just got nominated for an Emmy. I know you did. Yeah, it's so, awesome. I mean, every it's to me it's a show. You know, the Miss Pat show is a little show that that yeah. that just nobody wanted, nobody understood it. You know, everybody wanted me to be the typical black mama on TV. It's better. And, it's funny. It's gritty. It's real. Yeah, and and finally somebody listened, which was BET Plus. Right. And they allowed me to be me. Well. You know what? You're allowed to be more politically incorrect than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I don't, but okay. <laughs> your your show is very politically incorrect. <laughs> we say some shit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we do. Right. <laughs> yeah. We, I, I can get away with a little bit more than you probably could be. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's refreshing. And it is. People but... want, people are feeling very stifled. People feel there's just too much. You can't say that. I say what the fuck I want to say in society, and they and so when someone like you comes along, um, it's. Uh, I mean, we have that in common. Yeah, I mean, you. you that, what's, why is the world such a pussy these days? Exactly. You why know, is oh, the world such a pussy? You know, he's like, oh my God, you can't say that. Right. I can say that. Yes, you can. You know, why, why can't I say how no, I feel? You can. But people go cry and, you know, they ready to jump off a fucking ledge no. and any little thing you say. It's it's just, it's the kids that we're raising today. They don't know how to, they don't work for shit. We give them everything. So that's why they turn into a bunch of yeah. hoes and be crying all the time. Right. I tell my all the time, don't, don't nobody owe you shit. Right. Don't nobody owe you shit. If you don't get up and get out and get something like I can't say it 30 years ago, you ain't gonna never have shit. But that's what's wrong, you know. Instead of being honest to kids, they want to pamper kids and it makes the world easy for everybody. The world ain't easy. Why, why, why I cuss at my kids? And people say, oh, how can you cuss at your kids? I say, because when, when they get into the real world and somebody say, fuck off, they won't fall into the ground. Oh, that's all you got? Fuck off? I heard that from my mom every day. Who'd ever thought it? You and I are the role models America needs. <laughs> we are. We should replace Biden and uh, uh, the vice Kamala president, Harris? Ka Kamala Harris. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could probably take <laughs> You know Biden didn't have COVID, right? You know he went and got his eyes redone. Is that right? Yeah, he had his eyes lift. Now, eyes lift. I've never heard this until this moment, but that's an interesting theory. Look, his eyes look like a baby ass. I was like, who do you think you fooled him by? Oh. You went and had your fucking eyes done for the sixth time. Wow. 
Yeah, he, he had his There's face There's a down. scoop. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah, look at his his eyes look like they're 22, but his neck is 87. Right. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. Give me a hug. Thank you. All right. This was a pleasure. And a good yeah. drink to whoever made it. It's hard, it's hard to read you sometimes, but you know, the one thing you can't hide is laughter. Oh. So I, made, I saw you laughing a lot. Oh, so I had fun. You must like fun. me a little. I do like you. Okay. Uh -huh.